Because once you understand who you belong to, that you are a child of the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and God of Gods. You're a royal priesthood and a chosen generation. Mighty men and mighty women of God. Once you understand that you are blessed and highly favored, you got to change it in your mind. Some of you got to have a mind change because you're bound by those words that were spoken over you. The Lord can take any bitter situation that we have in our lives. And when we look at the finished work of what Jesus Christ did for us, he can make it okay. The pain may be there, but it will be bearable for you. Because he can heal every heart, wounded heart, broken heart, soul wound that you have. And how can we say that we cannot uh, forgive people when Jesus forgave us? How can we say that we can't love our enemies when Jesus died for us? All that Jesus endured for us was to walk in victory. But we're living in a world now that is full of bitterness and full of hate. And see, the problem is people are trying to sprinkle a little bit of Jesus on their bitterness and anger and act like it's going to be okay. And it's not working. And it's not working for the church. And the church has got to do better. We can't act like the world. He's called us to be different and show the love of Jesus among each other. Why do people want what we got if the church can't even get along? But he's calling forth a remnant that we're willing to pay the price to come together in unity for a great revival. But it's going to cost us something. So after they left it, then they came to Elium, the scripture that I just read. Elium means abundance or bountiful. And just imagine how they were in the wilderness and thinking, okay, will God provide for us again? Will he do it again? And they came to this uh, 12 oasis with 70 palm trees in the wilderness. What an amazing sight. And as I was reading this, if you look at this, this particular scripture, I believe what it tells us that Jesus is the, he's the living water in any kind of wilderness that you're in. He's refreshing. He brings refreshing to all of us. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, is your river flowing now? Or is it a little twinkle? Or is it stopped up by a lot of garbage we've consumed in our lives? Then 12, there was 12 oases. 12 represents order of government. And I believe that's telling us that the Lord governs every area of our lives. Even when we don't feel like it, his plan's working. You know, when when God doesn't answer our prayers the way we want it, we get all upset. Well, God, you must have missed it. (laughs) When it's his plan working, we just got to trust him and his timing. And then the number... And you know, the palm trees. Do you know there's a, what, a, what we're supposed to be, palm tree Christians? The Bible says we're like palm trees, not oak trees, not like uh, pine trees, but palm trees. Do y'all know why we're supposed to be like palm trees? They bend, but they don't break. You seen the big palm, the winds that come in and those palm trees are just going back and forth? Well, the stress makes the palm tree stronger. And some of y'all are saying, well, I should be a strong palm tree Christian right now. (laughs) But you grow through the storms of life. You may bend, but you didn't break. And you're going to be stronger because of it. But not only that, 70 means restoration. See all the different nuggets that are in that one scripture? He is the healer. Whatever you need, he will heal you when you're willing, obedient to do what he calls you to do. And when we give him praise and glory, he will restore what the enemy has stolen. And I believe we are entering a season of restoration. Restoration 
of what the enemy has stolen from us. But while we're going through this time, we need to do some praising. See, we can choose Mara and be bitter and be mad at God, be mad at people, be mad at the Republicans, be mad at the Democrats, be mad at everything that's taking place, and be bitter and angry, or we can choose Ilium. I trust God. My refreshing is going to come from him, and I'm going to thank him for what I do have, not what I've lost, but if I've got breath in my body, I will praise him. Because he'll do it again. And there's power in her praise. Not in her whining. Not in our complaining. Lord, forgive us all. As I said, I had a symptom of whining this week. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, but I had a symptom of whining and complaining too, okay? I guess it's confession day. All right, let's talk about Jehoshaphat. I love this one. All righty, we fixed to go somewhere now. Because we got some praisers in the house. Amen. 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 All right. Second Chronicles 20, 15 through 17. And he said, listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed, because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the accent of Zig, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Y'all say position yourselves. Stand still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. I just love the story of Jehoshaphat. Because he tells us, I mean, he was in a desperate situation. These three different armies were coming after him. But he was smart enough to pray and ask God, how am I supposed to fight this battle? And God said, don't be afraid. This battle belongs to me. You position yourself, and you send the praisers ahead. Don't you know the praisers were saying, I hope Jehoshaphat heard from the Lord. <laughs> That'd be like me putting our praise team in front of the battle. I hope Sandra heard from God this time, praise God. I don't think that was a God thing. But they did. They started praising the Lord. Praise the Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Thank the Lord. Your mercy endures forever. And the enemy got so confused. What did they do? They killed each other. Because see, the enemy don't know how to act when we praise the Lord when we're going through a battle. He don't understand it when we're praising the Lord, when people are talking about us and trying to destroy us. When we can say, praise God for those people that are talking about me because you're going to put new friends in my life. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord that, well, first of all, let me tell you this. If your arm is broken, okay, and the bone is sticking out, don't go confessing it's not broke, it's not broke, it's not broke. Pray about it. If God wants to heal it, fine, but then go get you a cast on it, okay? Just say, Lord, I thank you that it's going to be healed quickly in Jesus' name. Same thing, if you go to the doctor and he gives you a bad diagnosis of cancer, don't get up there and bless that poor old doctor out. But when you get out of there, say, I renounce that curse. I speak what the Lord of, word of the Lord says. By his stripes, I am healed. So we got pray and praise him. You know, if you lost your job, Lord, I just thank you, God, that you got a better job for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, it can 
confuses the enemy when we're going through the storms of life and we're happy, we're excited, we're not worried, we're not having a nervous breakdown, but we praise him in the good times. We praise him in the bad times. We praise him for who he is. It confuses him. How can they be happy? They lost their job. How can they be happy? They've had COVID. How can they be happy when it seems like everything's coming against them? See, what the enemy wants us to do is to quit, be discouraged, be down and out. I'm not going to praise the Lord. I'm just mad at him right now. Well, you know, he don't really care. There's power in your words. And if you want to be, if you want to be at Mara by your bitter water for a long time and never pass the test, you're going to be there. So when they were, the praisers went ahead. And I started to bring out the tambourine. Have you ever heard of Amanda play the tambourine? I think I'd be worse than her, so I wasn't about to pull that thing out and turn this into a comedy show. <laughs> I hid that tambourine. But seriously, after the, the enemies killed each other, it took three days to pick up all of the blessings. And in fact, they called the place Valley of Blessings. Why? Because they were obedient to the Lord. And see, when you are facing your battle, you need to pray to God about how you need to fight. You know, the thing about it, he may say, what you need to do is you need to forgive somebody. And you say, mm -mm, mm -mm. I didn't hear you, Lord. Get away from me, devil. But it may be forgiveness. If you're facing cancer, it may be, Lord, do I take chemo? What do you want me to do? But it's your battle. But he'll tell you what to do. But then when you do, you got to put on the whole armor of God, though. And fight. And he'll let you know how. See, we want him to fight the battle, but we got to get on the battlefield. See, a lot of people, they, they want him to fight, but they're not willing to do their part and put on the whole armor of God. And be obedient to what he's telling you to do. But I'm telling you, don't be afraid. The Lord is going to fight this battle for you. If you will be faithful and you will be obedient. But see, so many times I feel like the Lord's trying to fight our battle and we mess it up with our mouth. Is that just me? <laughs> and he's saying, if you would just be quiet long enough, I could probably take care of this battle for you. And I think what's taking place in the world is we're all arguing among each other, Democrats, Republicans, I believe in COVID, I don't believe in COVID, mask or no mask. And you know, and it's just a field day for the enemy. And we're fighting among Christians and each other, and the enemy is, seems to be winning right now. And we can't blame anybody but ourselves. We got to do all we know to do, but when he tells us to zip it, zip it, zip it, what are we supposed to do? Zip it, zip it, zip. <laughs> but when we do, we're entering a season of restoration. I got one more scripture, and we're going to start winding down here. Y'all learning anything? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the last scripture, 2 Kings 8, 3 through 5. It came to pass at the end of seven years, y'all say seven, that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, tell me please all the great things Elisha has done. Now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there was the woman whose son had been restored to life appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, O Lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. Y'all remember the story of how the lady from Shunem, how God gave her a son, how the son died, and how Elisha was used to bring this young man back from the dead. I mean, he was raised from the dead. 
Well, the lady was warned that there would be a great famine in the land for seven years and that she would need to go to the land of the Philistines to live. Well, in this particular scripture, Gehazi, who was a servant to Elisha, was meeting with the king, telling about all the great miracles that Elisha had done. And he was just telling him about the young man that was raised from the dead when they walked in the door. And he said, that's the one. There's, there's that lady and there's that boy that Elisha raised from the dead. And so the king granted her her property, her home, and not only that, every, all the money that had been made over her property over those seven years. Because God will restore what you've lost. But you got to look at this lady. She had a choice to make. First of all, look at it this way. God can bring life into any dead situation. Y'all got some dead situations right now? Well, hey, you're in miracle territory. He can bring life into any dead situation. And we got to understand who God is. We got to get our faith back to believe the miracle working God that he is. Number two, this woman was obedient. See, she could have made the decision, I'm going to sit right here by my house. I'm not going anywhere. I don't believe there's going to be no famine in the land. I don't believe there's a famine in the land. And you know what would have happened? She'd have stayed right there and she'd have died. It was probably uncomfortable for her to get out of her comfort zone. Who likes to get out of their comfort zone? Not me. The older you get, you really like your comfort zone and your bed and everything else. But she was in her comfort zone. But she came back. She was willing. Another thing is God's an on-time God. It's no accident that that took place at that particular time. That was a setup by God. And when you're faithful and you're obedient to the Lord, he'll work things out just like that. Divine connections, divine favor, divine blessings. He's an on-time God. It's not always our time, but he will come forth. And then restoration. When we're faithful and we're obedient, he will restore what the enemy has stolen. I think a lot what the enemy is stealing right now is a lot of people's peace. If he can't kill you, he's trying to wear you out, depress you out, or just distract you out right now and to steal your peace. Because, you know, if you're rattled, it's hard to have faith. When you're worried about your family, when you're worried about what you have, when you're worried about this, it's hard to have faith. And that's exactly what the enemy is doing right now. And he's trying to steal people's, uh, their peace. Because that's what the Lord gives us, peace. That no matter what we're going through, he's in charge. So he's trying to put so much fear in people in this world that we're bound by so much fear and we can't have faith and we've lost our peace. Well, this is the day to get it back. How dare you, devil, to take our peace? But we got to fight for it. And I believe we are entering a season of healing, restoration, and revival. And I am so ready to lay hands on the sick without a mask and worried about it. (laughs) And see God do miracle signs. But you know what he's he's taught me through all this? You don't have to touch nobody. He's God. All you got to do is send the word and say, be healed, sister. Because he's the healer and not us. And I think he's getting all of our attention to say, I don't need you. When you know that who I am and the power that I have, you just be obedient to what I'm telling you to do. You listen to my voice. And we are going to have a time of healing, restoration, and revival. But we got to seek it. And we got to understand that whatever you need from the Lord, he'll do it again. Some of you right now, you're, you're just at a Red Sea and you think, have a flashback of what God's brought you through. The time that you thought you were never going to make it, you thought you were going under, but how God showed up at an on-time God. 
and how you're still here today. He hears your prayers. He sees those tears, and he hasn't forgotten you. But while you're in the process, just praise him. Just give him the best praise. Right there in your den, I want you just to stand up and give the, a holy shout to the Lord and say, I'm going to make it. No matter what you're going through, praise the Lord, your mercy endures forever. Y'all say that with me. Praise the Lord, your mercy endures forever. One more time. Praise the Lord, your mercy endures forever. Now let's just celebrate it. Thank you, Lord. Our ministry is to spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world through the media. Television is very expensive, but so worth it. By partnering with us, you can touch people's lives all over, and this world needs Jesus. If you would consider partnering with us, you can make a donation through our website, sandrahancott.org, or through the address that's on the screen, or you can even call us at 1-800-579-7350. I want to thank you in advance for being a blessing. I pray this message blessed you. And I feel like many of you are fighting a battle that doesn't really belong to you. You need to do all you know to do. Be obedient to the Lord. Pray. See how you need to fight this battle because it's yours. But then watch the Lord fight for you. He loves you. He wants to restore you. And see what takes place is when we let the Lord fight our battle, restoration will take place. But see, so many times the Lord is trying to fight the battles for us, but we mess it up with our mouth. Have you ever done that before? Because we got to tell everybody off. We got to give our opinion when God's saying, if you just do your part, just, just be quiet for just a little while, he'll fight the battle. So I really believe he is fighting the battle for you. And when we do battle God's way, he will restore what the enemy has stolen from you. And many of you, I believe we are entering a season now of healing, restoration, and revival. And say, Lord, do it again. <laughs> if you did it one time, he will do it again. He hasn't forgotten you. And if you're watching this broadcast and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, well, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you're going to face a lot of battles, but you're going to be all alone. And maybe you know religion, but you don't know Jesus. But if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, just repeat this prayer after me, and I want to lead you to Jesus. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me, and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life. And from this day forth, I am going to live for you. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Find you a good Bible-believing church and grow to be more like Jesus. But if you're watching and you need a miracle, maybe you need a healing, maybe you're facing a battle that you just feel all alone and you need special prayer, we do have a 1-800 number and we would love to pray with you. But if we don't pick up right away, leave a message. We'll call you back. It's a very busy line. There's a lot of hurting people. But you are special to us. Send us those praise reports. It makes my day to see what God's doing in your life and then how we play just a small part in what God is doing to bring revival and restoration in your life. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. And I'd like for you to consider maybe just a one-time donation. Television's expensive. But this is a wonderful opportunity to spread Jesus to a hurting world because this world is hurting and the only hope we have is in Jesus. And you can make that possible to help hurting people by partnering with us. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. Don't you dare miss it. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus.
My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.